with him for two years, so it's nice having him here. Have you been kind of like a mentor or leader to those guys? Yeah, I think that just happens naturally. Um, and I think what will end up happening is once they get used to being here, they'll challenge me too. Um, so like I said, I'm excited to have them here because I think they're special, special guys uh, with special qualities. Yeah, I think right now, uh, just in general, for everybody, OTAs is a time to get your routine down. Um, so it's obviously not the season. I don't think you should treat it exactly like the season, but I think it's kind of a trial run to see what works for you, get your diet right, get your stretching right, get all this stuff off the field right, get a routine with going to practice, stretching before practice. And that's kind of what I want to develop. And then when I go into camp, I'm feeling good. It's like been here, done that. Um, I mean, obviously it's my third camp, but you know, like looking back to what OTAs were before will help me out. And then when you look at the New England game and, and what happened last year, how do you build on that? I mean, I know every season is kind of different and, and its, own, its own thing, but how do you advance further than you did last year? Yeah, well, first off, I think the thing with the, uh, with the Patriots game is like, I had never been there before personally. Like, so for me, it was an opportunity to see what it's like to be in playoffs, see what that feels like, and then go against the team that uh, ultimately won the, won the championship. So it's like uh, just being there was experience in and of itself. Um, and then building off of that, it's just kind of continuing to do what we did and then to get better. Um, but I think the biggest thing, like I said, we got a young team. Like we all went there. We, we felt what it feels like to be in Foxborough when it's zero degrees uh, and play against one of the best quarterbacks ever. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I mean, I feel good about the defense. Uh, I think the biggest thing is I feel like we've had a lot of retention. So, you know, I've been here three years now, and it's like you see a lot of the same faces over and over again. You start to see guys understanding the defense and the package uh, from a broader perspective, starting to understand offenses better and better. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. Like, we're comfortable in the defense, and then once you're comfortable and you can play fast and you don't have to worry about the package, you get better. Um, and like I said earlier, we got a group of guys who push each other. I mean, you look at the D-line, some of the leaders we have on the D-line, um, and some of the great talent we have on the D-line, it's easy to get better in that environment. Does that put more pressure on, on, on capitalizing on the fact that you do have retention, a lot of guys are coming back, they're getting older though, you feel like the window of opportunity, you need to kind of take advantage of that more? Uh, yes and no. I feel like you, you always have that pressure because every season is its own season. You never know what the next season is going to bring, and then obviously the previous season doesn't really matter. Um, so it's like a healthy pressure, but I don't think anybody's looking around the locker room like we need to win now or we can't do it. I think it's, hey, we're in OTAs. Let's get as good as we can get this practice and then see what happens when January rolls around. Jerry, you talked about building your routine here in the OTAs. Can you talk about your process from the end of OTAs to the beginning of training camp? What does that look like for you? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, like I said, build your routine, keep doing that. Um, and then you have six weeks to get in great shape. So for me personally, uh, yes, I'm trying to get stronger, but the biggest thing for me is I want to come to camp feeling like the best version of myself from a stamina perspective. Um, you know, it's hot, you really roll straight into preseason games, so there's not time to, you know, like mess around and get in shape. You need to come and be uh, ready to play. Yeah, I mean, my thing is everybody has their, has their own routine, again, uh, OTAs is about creating a routine. So whatever people do that works, they should do that. Uh, for me, I think it's just a time for me to get better um, and a time for me to hang out with the team. So, I mean, I enjoy being here and hanging out with the guys. Isaac, going back to Eric's question, um, is, it, is there a little bit of added pressure just because Philip Rivers uh, is kind of, his career is dwindling down. He only has a number of limited years left. Is there kind of like that added pressure? Hey, we got to get one done with our quarterback and yeah, I mean, I think you guys are talking about the pressure. I think there's always the pressure when a Super Bowl. I'm here, and this is my job. Everybody in the locker room is hired, and this is their job. So there's always pressure to win a Super Bowl. Uh, I don't know about you guys. If you watched last season, Phillip's getting old, but he's still playing as good as he's ever played. Um, so Phil being at the end of his career, uh, not really a factor in our mind. We're just trying to win games. Uh, I think first off and foremost with Drew, you're gonna, you should expect a guy who's gonna work hard. 
Um, I think that's just the Notre Dame way. Obviously, I have pride in Notre Dame. Um, he's going to come and work every single day. He's going to learn the playbook uh, quickly. Um, but he's a great player, too. I mean, I think, like, his, his work ethic is a standard, but his, his ability to play is something that um, really makes him special. He was a safety and a DB pretty much at the beginning of his career at Notre Dame and then moved to linebacker. So you see a lot of his athleticism being uh, in the box. Um, but I'm excited to see what he does. I think he's going to have to compete because we have a really good linebacker room. But, I mean, you guys are talking about the pressure. I think that's just going to make him better. So I'm excited for him. Yeah, I mean, I think you're seeing the game change a little bit where uh, even at end, you know, you look at guys that are playing my position, a lot of them are 250, 260. It's not this huge game. It's about quickness and speed. And he does a good job of covering the field. He does, does a good job of coverage, uh, which is important for our linebackers. So to answer your question, yes, though, I think, I think you're seeing that change happen. How would you evaluate Jerry's story? Uh, I think he's a beast, first off. But second off, um, I think he's a guy who can do a lot of different things. We needed a guy who's going to come in, obviously stop the run, and then be able to contribute on third down. Uh, and I think he checks those boxes. If you look at his last season, I think it speaks for itself. Um, and he's a guy who's going to work hard. So whatever we need him to do with his ability, he'll be able to do it uh, because of his attitude. He obviously played with the Torn and Labrum. What does that mean, and, uh, uh, talking about him playing out there, playing injured, and obviously still having a strong season? Yeah, I mean, I think it says a lot about his character. I think he was committed to winning a national championship last year at Notre Dame. And the injuries and the noise, uh, as they call it, didn't really matter to him. All he wanted to do was win. Um, and I'm expecting the same thing when, he, when he's healthy and ready to go here. When we get in these preseason games and then into the regular season, uh, you know, as someone who cares about him, I'm expecting him to do the same thing and contribute to winning a Super Bowl. How, how is he away from football? He's kind of tired with us, but you guys know him. How is he recruiting? Yeah, he's cool. I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of time with Jerry um, at Notre Dame. He was a guy that I was hitting up on weekends, like, what are we doing this weekend? Um, and it was funny because he was one of the few young guys that I actually was able to get close with. Um, because you know there's a big difference between an 18-year-old and a 21-year-old in college. Um, but he was mature, and he's a cool guy. I like hanging out with him. Since the Lions can't go up against each other much during OTAs, how much of a, during this period for you is refining hand technique and trying to get off the line and avoid pre-snap? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think OTAs, like you guys are asking about OTAs, Within practice, a lot of it is that, you know, working hands, working moves you've not worked before, like you said, focusing on pre-snap penalties and then obviously learning the package. A lot of the physical stuff you can't really do, um, so you're exactly right. It's a lot about hands. You've Anything been, hand-wise you've been working to refine this? Yeah, I think it's just becoming a little bit more fluid with my movement. Um, I think one thing that I've struggled with in the past that's, that's something that I'm working on and that's getting better is just uh, – coming up and knowing what move I'm going to do, lining up and having a pre-snap plan. I think that's important with D-line. I think a lot of times you see guys get caught in their rushes and they're just standing up watching because they don't have a, a pre-snap plan. Um, so that's something I'm trying to focus on. Isaac, you're, uh, you love doing photography. You got to go to the Lakers, do some photography there. How, what was that experience like for you? Shout out to Chris for hooking that up. <laughs> no, it was fun. I mean, you're watching one of the best basketball players in history first off and foremost. So he's a beast, LeBron James. Um, but, you know, like, I think it's important for guys to have passions off the field. This is my job, and this is my number one priority, but I'm human. I like to take pictures, and I like to do some other stuff, too. Um, so it was an opportunity to get better uh, in that respect, and so it was really fun. Talk about some of the other things you got to make Yeah, so one thing I'm working on is See You on Sunday, which is an initiative that invites people to take a day off social media. The goal is just to start the conversation about social media health uh, well, I, what I like to say is, you know, we spend eight hours a day sleeping. We spend uh, a lot of time eating and doing things like that. And we talk about food health. We talk about sleep health. Um, and it's not as much of a conversation to talk about social media health. But you're seeing people spend four and five hours a day um, on these platforms. So that's something I'm passionate about and I've really been working on. Even though it is cold and dumb west out here now, with, uh, <laughs> Mike and Arcata stop, would you guys ever watch it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's self-explanatory. Like, I can't really say too much because we got smacked. Um, but we'll see. You know, next year will be a new year. Does he have any bets? No. No <laughs> bets. No <laughs> bets. Maybe a push-up contest. That's it. Thanks, Isaac. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it.
Hey guys, how you doing? Hopefully, at the end of the season, we have good, good conversation, good things to talk about. Are you kind of the, the veteran of the group now? How long have you been here? Um, yeah, you could say me and Keenan the vets of the group, knowing that you've been in this game seven, eight plus years, that everything just comes so simple and the game slows down for you. Have you, have you ever been more vocal now, being one of the veterans versus being one of the younger guys in the year's league? Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I won't shout back from him, but. We kind of got like a veteran room now, guys, three, four years in now. Mike, three years, and Tay Scott, three years. So it ain't too much you can talk about, but with the rookies, Trey, we just just talking them up and just coaching them with the, with the minor details. How will your role change now that, that Tyrell is gone? I would imagine. Hopefully, it change for the better. More more players, more opportunity for me to showcase my skill set and get over the field and ball out. Um, it was frustrating at that point, but being a veteran on Mills and the, the players, the players that were coming towards me, just making them and not making them, and, and and just coming out there and just continue to bring camaraderie to the team, continue to boost our receiver room. Do you feel a little under the radar this year, being that you know you had some injuries, but I mean you came up clutch in, in a couple of big situations, but to have a, a full 16 game season to. I hope so. They need a double Keenan, double Mike, and hopefully I just come over each, each and every time I'm on the field. What was that moment like against Kenny in that late that fourth quarter? You have two of the biggest plays of the game to extend that drive for Mike to ultimately get the, the touchdown and two-point conversion. Um, I, I felt good. I felt comforted by myself knowing that the, my role in the offense had diminished a little, and when I got my number call and Phil looked towards me to make a play, and I made those plays for the team, and we came out victorious. I will accept it, man. When I wrote, when I wrote them, they didn't write me back, so I knew what that was. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say you're the fastest receiver in the NFL or player, I'm one of them, and I won't back down from a challenge, not one bit. I'm a competitive person, and we want to get on the field and race. We can race. Your first year here, are you kind of even a good fishing hole around here yet? Uh, I'm not a good saltwater fisherman. I'm a freshwater guy. I like to jump on jump on the boat and just sit still all day and not go through waves. So I, every time I go home, I get a chance to fish. Travis, the receivers on this team, like you mentioned, can you talk about each of them, what they bring to the team, and also how they are personal? Um, as a person first, each and every one down to earth. We love to build each other up, confidence each other. Um, Skill set wise, you have Mike, big target, one hand, two hands, just throw the ball his way. You have uh, our rock runner in Keenan. He can just do anything, everything you tell him to do. We have Jeremy, who's a big receiver also. He can block. He can catch ball downfield. And you have Tate in a couple years from now with him just learning the game and, and watching his game from Keenan. You can see he will become Keenan one day. And you have Dre. He's, he's the such thing as Mike. We just got big target guys. And with me, the speed guy, just continue to showcase my skill set. I love it. I love it. When 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 the when the ball come my way is not coming to me and I see Hunter or Keenan behind me when I take the safety or the DB with me, I smile to myself and like good job knowing that I got those guys open. It's a team sport. Being being in a role like that, when you continue to be selfish, the ball gonna eventually come your way. You just gotta take advantage of it. How big is that Henry back in the offense? Oh, it's real big, man. Knowing that instead of the Keenan and Allen, you gotta keep an eye on this guy too because he will run past you and make a play downfield. Travis, how does the offense change, even when you're not getting the football, to be like Eric said, to be able to stretch the field, to open up opportunities for other guys, mm-hmm. couple that with Hunter coming back, just the, the complexion of this offense, how is it looking for that? Ah, more, more explosive, more plays downfield, and we, we just can't wait to get started and see the 40, 20 plus, 30 plus yard plays downfield. Travis, biggest chip on your shoulder this year because of the frustration of injuries last year? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The chip on my shoulder is to, just to come in and play my best and at the end of the season to come back to this podium and smile at you guys. Travis, what do you fish for when you're back home? Uh, I'm going to go bass fishing, speck fishing. Um, I fish with crickets, sometimes worms, 
Just sit on it. Whoever bite, I'm snatching it out the water. <laughs> I could say like a six pound bass. Not that big, but it's kind of big for where I'm from. As a receiver standpoint, you should never miss OTAs. Just if your quarter QB number one here, your receiver should be here no matter what. Just game planning, learning from each other, catching those balls that we know that late December, January, we're going to be catching those same balls. So I won't miss a beat from it. So like the punt return game can be more dynamic this year too, just with what you've been able to do over the years and also what you guys accomplished last year? Oh, absolutely. With me or Dez back there, it don't matter who's going back there, we rooting each other on and wh whoever make the best play and the best man wins. Oh, absolutely. Before the games, every time we walk past the front, hey, who's going back there? You're a 20 today. Like, hey, it's up in the air. Just make sure you punt the ball to us. Did you ever see both of you guys out there at the same time? If Coach Stu want to draw it up to make it be that way, it, it will be a great challenge for the for us and the other team. It's going to be a long day for them. Thanks, Travis. Thanks, Travis. No problem. I have to go fishing with you one of these days. I don't know if I can make it to school.